So how did a nation home to the world's first major environmentalist political party become Europe's biggest emitter of carbon dioxide? And how did it go from phasing out its zero emissions nuclear power plants to instead open the world's biggest coal power plants where fear trumps science and where energy experts are shunned and philosophers and sociologists have greater influence in a country's energy policy? It can come with some disastrous long-term consequences. Well, right now, Germany is facing an energy crisis. So in this video, we're going to look back in history and see how did the collapse of the German nuclear industry take place? Well, hey friends, my name is Osama Big. I have a background in nuclear engineering. And on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. I also like to deep dive into energy trends in various countries. And Germany is a perfect fit for this video. Now, where did all of this start? Now, you may ask, how did all of this happen? And not every story starts at the crisis point. So let's start from the beginning. German culture. German culture has a long standing connection in regards regards to nature and that of romanticism. Love of forests and almost a mystical regard to that of nature is strongly embedded in the people of Germany. Now, because of this, energy sources like wind and solar are perceived as having a deep-seated connection to that of mother nature, and thus they become the good guy. Whereas the perception of the man-made reactors, that unnatural phenomena that is dangerous and unnatural become the bad guy. Fun fact, many may not know, but this is not true. Natural nuclear reactors did exist in nature. Actually, in a West African nation called Gabon, they had been operating for millions of years. Nuclear energy is a natural source of power. Nuclear fission especially has a strong connection to nature, just as strong as nuclear fusion does with the source that our energy provides from our sun. In recent history, romanticism in nature became strongly coupled with far left activism. And in the 1960s, the ultimate formation of the political political party called the Greens. Now, this was a reaction to industrial capitalism. And also this was carried forward and expressed as a reaction to protection of the environment. Now, for those that don't know, the Greens are the world's first major environmentalist political party. Now, the anti-nuclear movement became a significant appeal to middle-class Germans as nuclear energy was slowly started to become correlated with that of anti-NATO missile sentiments, the fear of World War III. So fear, in a sense, was a driving force in connecting nuclear energy energy, which is a clean, reliable resource, which has a lot of anti-proliferation built in to that of nuclear weapons, which is something that is not connected by any means. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg and the initial start. Things took a turn in 1986 after the Chernobyl accident. This created the first concern for Germans. All right. This had a major snowball effect, which allowed the Green Party to gain political momentum again. So the Green Party really took this event and started to integrate the anti-nuclear uh, rhetoric into to its core message. As the Green Party's influence grew, its most immediate effect was on Germany's changing policies to terminate research and development on both high temperature gas reactors and also fast breeder reactors. What's unique about these reactor designs and Germany's research toward them was that Germany was actually leading the forefront in development of these advanced technologies and pulling the plug on this research was truly unfortunate. It held back the world's nuclear community and advancement in nuclear innovation quite a bit. So from Chernobyl that took place in 1986 till that in 2006, a total of 19 power and research reactors were shut down in Germany. So yes, fun fact, even before Fukushima in 2011, Germany had been shutting down many of its nuclear assets. 10 years of the accident, a new coalition between the Social Democrats and the Greens was developed. And this was called the Red Greens. And at this point, anti-nuclear activism came to define the heart and soul of the environmental movement in Germany. Now, the Red Greens also worked with major utilities, to forge what is known as the nuclear consensus. In the year 2000, the nuclear consensus was a decision that was made to cap the life of operating nuclear plants across Germany to that of 32 years. And for those that don't know, the same reactor technologies, which are PWRs, pressurized water reactors, or BWRs, boiling water reactors, can have operating lifetimes to that of 60 to 80 years or more. It's such a waste of an energy asset. And it also has an impact on the energy security and affordability for that nation. In the nuclear energy industry, we know that nuclear power power has zero greenhouse gas emissions, and it's also one of the most environmentally significant sources of energy. And it also sustains baseload energy in a grid. However, the anti-nuclear perception that was developed remained strong and the fear was instilled into the public's mind. Now, fear, for those that don't know, is a very powerful emotion and it can be used as a political weapon like it was used in Germany. 
Let's fast forward to 2011, where Fukushima takes place, which is another nuclear accident that took place in Japan. The accident of the Japanese nuclear power plant led the chancellor to make a sudden decision to immediately shut down Germany's eight oldest reactors. This happened despite the RSK or the Reactor Safety Commission of Germany conducting an extensive review, which verified and evaluated the safety of Germany's nuclear reactors. It also evaluated how they would behave in regards to natural events that would take place, station blackouts, and also failure of cooling systems. Now, the RSK reported that all of Germany's reactors were safe to operate. Despite this verification and evaluation taking place by the German regulator, Merkel set up an ethics commission, which was made up of philosophers and sociologists. And on purpose, there was no participation from that of industry representatives. They were not invited to the table. As you may understand, a decision-making approach backed by science and strong technical understanding was not taken at the time. Rather, technical expertise and advice from the scientific community was ignored. Unfortunately, the regulator statements fell on deaf ears. In May of 2011, subsequently, the German government submitted a report presenting the possibility of phasing out nuclear power through the development of renewable technologies. Now, this would apparently happen without the sacrifice of energy supply. And as we know now, 12 years later, that didn't work out. And as you'll see, what other actions did Germany take? Well, right after Fukushima in 2011, Germany commissions one of the world's most advanced lignite fired stations. Okay, it's a whopping 2,200 megawatt station. And what is lignite as you may ask as i discussed a little bit in this video it's also known as brown coal it's actually the lowest quality of coal out there and this plant was built in germany with the motto that it is an important contribution to the security of our energy supply also just recently in 2020 germany opened another 1100 megawatt coal power plant which is one of its 84 coal power plants generating electricity in germany so as solar and wind capacity decreases in germany these coal power plants turn on with the intermittency of these renewable resources coal power provides that baseload energy. And in the year 2020, it produced 30% of the lignite that's mined worldwide. Germany loves its coal, unfortunately. Let's discuss the impacts it had to human health of people in Germany. Now, coal and fossil fuel power generation produces greenhouse gases. And this is not only horrible for our environment, but also for human health. Yes, around 7 million people across the world die per year just due to emissions from that of energy production. And coal is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases. Reports in Germany concluded that the nuclear phase out caused more than 1,100 more deaths per year from increased concentration of sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, and other particulate matter. The main driver here is the growth in coal power production in Germany, which accounts for a significant rise in mortality rates across Germany. Also, the National Bureau of Economic Research, NBER, assessed that the yearly cost of Germany's nuclear phase-out is cost around $12 billion per year, and part of that is actually due to human health impacts. What were the lessons learned from Germany's nuclear phase out? These were lessons learned the hard way, by the way. The first lesson is that policymakers underestimated the cost of renewable subsidies and the strain it would have on the national economy. Now, of course, when it comes to subsidies and renewable subsidies, that long-term thinking was not applied. And you find that out later on how negative impact that it had on the economy itself. The second lesson learned is that the retail price of electricity for end consumers, people like you and me in Germany, increased significantly. And this more than doubled from the year 2000 to 2013. The third lesson learned is that the rapid growth of renewable energy subsidies, they reduced wholesale prices in that of Germany, and this had negative consequences for markets and companies. The fourth lesson learned is that the wholesale price modeling in Germany changed as a result of renewable energy penetration. And now you'll see that the wholesale price reacts to that of weather. Okay, so one word for this is instability. Number five is fossil fuel and nuclear power plants are facing operational stresses because of the less reliable ability in the grid. And as you know, you need a strong grid to maintain baseload power for plants that are consuming electricity. So baseload energy plants are consuming electricity as they're producing electricity. And when you have an unstable grid, it creates issues for these baseload sources. Number six was that large scale investments in the grid were required. And as you know, these upgrades and investments are not cheap. Number seven is that increase in regulatory uncertainty and financial risk for stakeholders increased for renewable energy. And this was mainly due to the over generous and unsustainable subsidies. Policymakers in Germany were well intentioned with their renewable energy policies. However, providing these over generous subsidies for renewable energy technologies slowly revealed themselves to be quite unsustainable. 
The question is, was Germany warned in advance? Did they know about these issues that would come as a result of their nuclear phase out? And the simple answer is yes. In 2007, a report was issued by the Deutsche Bank, hopefully I pronounced that right, which warned Germany of a few challenges that it would face if it went through with the nuclear phase out, which was number one, increased dependence on gas imports from Russia. It's 2022 now, and we know that this 2007 report was accurate. Number two was that it would miss its carbon dioxide emission targets by a wide margin. We know that's happening right now. Also, it would face higher electricity prices, which is also taking place. And lastly, it would suffer more blackouts. And yes, we know that this is taking place at the moment. The prediction is now becoming a reality and has been a reality for several years now. International organizations like the IAE or the International Energy Agency also warned Germany that its decision would without a doubt limit its potential to reduce its carbon emissions. Let's do a deep dive into the financial burden of this phase out. A study was conducted by KFW Branken Gruppe, which estimated that a 25 billion euro per year would need to be invested by the government to meet its energy window nuclear phase out goals. 25 billion euros per year is not a small amount. Adding that all up, that's around $262 billion by the year 2020. So $10 billion goes to fossil fuel plants, $144 billion to renewable sources. And as you can imagine, this includes a lot of the subsidies. 29 billion euros on high voltage electric lines. So in short, a grid without nuclear is very, very expensive. Transitioning and phasing out nuclear for that of renewables and fossil fuels is even more expensive. All right, so overall worldwide, Germany is one of the world's biggest exporters of gas, coal, oil, since it has very little natural resources domestically. It goes to show it's also Europe's biggest emitter of carbon dioxide. This story is a lesson learned for not only Germany, me but for the entire world. What I learned from this lesson is that leaders across the world need to make scientifically informed decisions before choosing environmental policies. These decisions impact countries' energy security. They also impact the lives of the individuals living there and the quality of life, and also to that of surrounding nations. What we learned from Germany's nuclear phase out is that it was not the best decision. Well, if you're interested in knowing exactly which nuclear reactors, which are around 14 nuclear reactors that Germany shut down after Fukushima, I made a great video here that you can check out Hope you enjoyed this video. Until then, take care. Bye.